Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria, and this is kind of a response video to Scalagrim on is there elitism in HEMA or historical European martial arts, and I'll come back to that title in a minute, very important. Um, but it's kind of not a response video to him. So, first of all, that video by Scal, link below to that video, is a great video. Um, there's nothing really, he doesn't actually make any controversial uh, statements in it at all. Um, in a sense, you could argue, actually, he doesn't uh, specifically focus on elitism in um, HEMA, and I'll come back to that particular uh, kind of point in a minute. Um, and it's more of a general thing about, you know, why don't you just enjoy what you do, accept that different people have got different aims, and get on with it, and uh, live and let live. I completely agree, okay? <laughs> Absolutely fine. Um, I completely agree with the message of the video. Uh, so in that sense, this isn't a response to Scal. So what this is a response to is some of the misconceptions, misunderstandings, and outright um, wrong statements, actually, in the comments underneath that video, which I think are very interesting. And unfortunately, being a YouTuber myself of much less magnitude than Scal, obviously, but uh, nevertheless, being a YouTuber for several years, sometimes the title of your video, people see that title and they respond to that title. They don't respond to the content. And this is really, really frustrating as a YouTuber. Um, I see it on Facebook pages, I see it in the HEMA community, and I see it in the comments on YouTube, that sometimes people are responding to what they think the video is about, not the, what the video is actually about. Um, and sometimes other YouTubers, like me and like other YouTubers out there, actually respond to the title and the perceived subject of the video, and not the actual video content. So the first point to make is, what is HEMA? Well, it stands for Historical European Martial Arts. HEMA is a very specific thing, okay? And before we have any further discussion on this topic, we have to agree that and accept that. We're not talking about generic sword fighting arts, we're not talking about Japanese swordsmanship or Filipino uh, martial arts, we're not talking about reenactment or battle of the nations type stuff, we're not talking about LARP, uh, we're not talking about stage choreography. HEMA is a very specific activity. Um, and so a lot of people's accusations about elitism or gatekeeping or this kind of stuff is a misconception based on the fact that what they're doing isn't HEMA, but maybe they've called it HEMA and the HEMA people go, I'm sorry, but that's not HEMA. So let's, let's set out a fact here. Historical European martial arts. The most important for the purpose of this discussion part is the historical. So historical European martial arts, HEMA. So if something's not based on historical sources, it's not HEMA. And it's as simple as that. And that's not gatekeeping, that's not elitist. That's just a fact. Um, so HEMA, very specifically, is the study of historical sources pertaining to the practice of martial arts. Ergo, if you want to learn how to use a longsword, then you go to longsword treatises written in the period when longswords were used, between the 14th and 16th century, for the most part. Um, so, quite simply, if I am studying Lichtenauer, for example, one of the most popular uh, systems or lineages of longsword that survive, I'm practicing HEMA. Uh, if I'm learning from the sources, and bear in mind, I don't individually need to be actually translating uh, Lichtenau sources, I don't need to be translating the sources myself. I could be studying under a teacher who has done that legwork, or indeed that teacher could have studied under someone who's done the legwork, but fundamentally it's part of a recreated lineage, and what you're trying to do is trying to revive or bring back those traditional and to some degree lost martial arts of the past. It is a, HEMA is a very specific and quite limited activity. So it actually makes it quite an easy target for people who want to call it elitist or, or, or kind of gate kept, if that's an expression, uh, because in a sense it is by its very nature. It's based on historical sources and we can't get around that. So if someone wants to um, go and you know pick up a foam longsword and bash around with their mates in the garden, do some sparring, that's absolutely fine. I don't think any human people in the world give literally to whatever's about that. That's absolutely fine. And whether you label that as sword fighting or whether you label it as, um, just call it longsword, or whether you label it as LARP or reenactment, living history, whatever, whatever title you want to give it to, 
that choice of title influences whether people say whether you know maybe it is that thing or it isn't that thing if you just call it uh, larp or sword fighting then indeed most people will go yeah fine if you say what you're doing is hema but it's not based on any historical sources then understandably people who do hema are going to go well it's, it's not really in exactly the same way as if i took a foil and took out um, some kids into the local park and um, you know just made up my own system of what to do with the foils i couldn't call it olympic sport fencing if we weren't following the rules set by the olympics and the fie okay so I, I couldn't describe it as that thing if it's not actually that thing. I could call it foil. I could even generically call it fencing. And indeed, this is a term I think which a lot of people who are into swords kind of veer away from. They don't want to call it fencing because when you hear the word fencing, most people only think of Olympic style, modern, uh, you know, white clothes and the foil epee sabre, the modern Olympic uh, FIE form of fencing. But in fact, fencing can refer to anything in you know anything with weapons really certainly historically so you could call it various things but just just like if you call it hema then accept if it's not hema people are going to point out yeah that's not hema now i think the next element that comes in is we have to be willing to accept and i know scal so as i've labeled this as a response to scal although as i've explained it's not fully a response to scal but Scal and I and uh, Raffaello, Metatron and various other people have called out over the years what is in pop culture known as bullshido. Okay, and I love the term bullshido because everyone knows what it means. And with one word, you can go, yeah, okay, that's bullshido. Um, and in case you don't know, it's the combination of the word bushido uh, for Japanese martial arts, traditional Japanese martial arts, and bullshit. Um, and unfortunately, if we just look at Asian martial arts for a second, there are parts of Asian martial arts which um, it turns out are not based on living traditions. It turns out are not based on any great, they're, they're basically there are people who set themselves up as uh, McDojo instructors who've got no real training. They don't really know what they're talking about. They don't have any direct or even indirect connections to lineages from Japan or China or the Philippines or anywhere else. They're just making up BS, okay? And we call that bullshito. Now, Inevitably, that happens in European style martial arts as well. So people doing things with long swords or rapiers or um, we've seen it. I've seen in my, you know, I've been involved in HEMA, the, the mainstream form of HEMA for more than 20 years. And we have seen clubs and instructors spring up who are fakes essentially um, they don't know what they're talking about they're teaching things which are potentially dangerous but also it's fraudulent because you're selling a product as a oh this is a traditional living you know either living tradition or a revived tradition from historical sources and it turns out it's not okay it's a lie so number one you're selling a lie number two you might be selling something that's dangerous um, and number three, it's kind of insulting to the people that do that legwork and do actually do that real thing. You know, you, you imagine if I tomorrow set myself up as a 12th Dan Kenjitsu um, master uh, with the, you know, Katana and Wakasashi. You understandably, lots of uh, people from Japanese traditional lineages who had done the legwork, who had trained for years, studied the sources, studied in Japan, they would be outraged understandably. So I think we have to be free to be able to, that is whether it's HEMA people or other historians or whoever, um, we have to be free to be able to call out Bullshido. And it's not fair to label that as elitism or gatekeeping. If I see something that's BS and is not HEMA, I'm going to say that's Bullshido, it's not HEMA, it's incorrect, it's maybe dangerous, and that guy's a fool and don't listen to them. And I, and I, I think you are, most viewers of my channel at least, maybe not all channels out there, but certainly viewers of my channel will, I think, agree with me on this, that I have the right to call out Bullshido when I see Bullshido. And it's not fair to accuse me of elitism or gatekeeping for that. Quite the opposite, in fact, the gatekeeping in this case is actually protecting people. It's protecting you, my viewers, by protecting you from what is a lie and showing you the truth. But additionally, for my students or for other people involved in HEMA, it's protecting them from a fraudster. It's protecting them from people who are teaching 
complete crap that is dangerous um, and is going to give them false impressions of uh, what the reality of fencing is and maybe protect them from going into a tournament and making a fool of themselves. Or in the most extreme example, them trying to use martial arts in an actual combative encounter and really paying the price for that. So, breathe. At the end of the day, historical European martial arts are a very specifically defined thing. Okay, if what you do doesn't fit into that, well, it just accept that's fine. The Hema people are fine with that, you're fine with that, you're doing something else. You don't have to try and smash your square peg into a round hole to force people to believe what you're doing is HEMA if what you're actually doing is not HEMA. I know that over the last few years, particularly on YouTube, it has to be said, HEMA has become a lot more widely known. And so I think there's a kind of HEMA bandwagon and a lot of people who just do some form of generic fencing or sword fighting are desperate to get what they do labelled as HEMA because maybe they think it has a kudos attached to it, maybe they think it just has a cool factor, or maybe they just don't know what to call what they do and therefore they think, well, HEMA is a good term. Um, but HEMA is a very specific activity. Now, is HEMA elitist? Uh, not in the sense that it's not inclusive. Okay, now you have to understand that HEMA people are, have a specific character to them. And if you do any sport, I mean, I've, you know, in the past I've played rugby, I've been on athletics teams, I've played tennis, I've done various things in my past, obviously fencing, archery, shooting as well, which I still do. Um, and each of those activities have a different personality and character and feel to them. And I'll tell you this, having been involved for more than two decades, uh, yeah, near, getting off for 25 years now, actually, in HEMA. HEMA people are often quite, um, quite fervent in how they believe that fairness should play a part in society. And a lot of HEMA people actually are very political people on every end of the spectrum, okay? They're not all lefty, they're not all righty, um, they're not all libertarian, but every end of the spectrum, they often have strong opinions about things because they're deeply interested in history. And very often people who are deeply interested in history are also, whether they admit it or not to themselves, also interested in politics and, and, and justice and law and things like this. So the fact is that um, there are, there's a huge amount, a huge amount of push within HEMA to be hugely inclusive and uh, to, or to struggle to represent minorities of every kind. Yes, we have less women in HEMA than men. That's a fact. Um, yes, we have less um, ethnic minorities in HEMA than white people. That's a fact. But we struggle, at least most groups that I know and interact with, actually struggle to try and, try and correct that, to try and correct that imbalance. So we're hugely inclusive. And there's a very important statistic you need to bear in mind. So um, if you look at the number of people who compete in HEMA at the top level, they are a huge minority, okay, or a tiny minority rather. They're a very small part of HEMA community as a whole. The vast majority of HEMA people are people who go to a club once a week or less and they practice some drills, they learn some historical stuff from their teacher in their HEMA club, they love it, um, and they're never going to do more than that in HEMA. That's all they do, okay? So they are studying real HEMA, but they're doing it as a part-time activity on the side, probably together with a bunch of other hobbies as well that they fill up their week with, and it's not something that they uh, take hugely seriously. They make up probably 90% of HEMA people, okay? I don't even know, no one knows how many HEMA people there are in the world practicing at official kind of, you know, HEMA clubs doing historical sources. Um, but there must be tens of thousands at this point all over the world. And if you look at the number of people, for example, on HEMA ratings, who are the people who've fought in competition in the last, I think it's about five years, something like that, it's been running. If you look at the number of people on HEMA ratings, it's tiny compared to that, okay? Because most people don't compete at that level. And there are lots of people who take HEMA incredibly seriously from an ac academic side or from a training point of view who aren't on HEMA ratings. I'm not on HEMA ratings. And yet having run HEMA clubs for 20 years, running, I big, run the biggest uh, European, oh, sorry, the biggest British HEMA event um, and obviously I've kind of made my living out of it. I run two HEMA clubs and I um, 
you know, I deal in antique swords. I've surrounded my whole life by I've fenced in competition. I've won medals. The last one was only in 2016, but I won the Long Point Sabre tournament in 2016. I haven't competed since then, but I used to compete loads in the past before HEMA ratings existed. Um, so I've done all of that stuff, but I'm not on HEMA ratings. So there are plenty of serious HEMA people out there who aren't even figured in that demographic either. Um, and, you know, to pluck another person out of the air, someone like um, Roland Vorchecka or Nick Thomas, both equally very serious HEMA practitioners who've made some degree of, you know, their income out of it. They're not in the HEMA ratings either, but they are very serious practitioners. But they are still in a, in a really tiny minority. Most HEMA people, it's just a hobby on the side. And we're incredibly inclusive, and we struggle to try and make it more representative of society and try and get more people involved in it. We don't gatekeep, and we're not elitist in that sense. We're incredibly inclusive. So the final point I want to come back to, I guess, is, again, it's not a response to Scal, um, because I don't disagree with anything that Scal said. It's a, it's a response, really, to some of the comments underneath Scal's video linked below. And that really is that what some people are confusing for gatekeeping or elitism is actually us calling out Bullshido when we see Bullshido. And any martial art will do that. Any activity will do that. If you're involved in tennis and you find out that there's an instructor across town who's training kids and he's taking their parents' money to uh, keep them for two hours and teach them absolute bullshit and never advance them, never improve them, then you're going to call that out, okay? And it's unfair, I think, to label people that do that when it's legitimate. It's unfair to label them as, oh, you're just elitist, you're just gatekeeping, when actually they might have a point. Sometimes bullshit is bullshit. You smell the bullshit and you've got to call out the bullshit. And it's as simple as that. But at the end of the day, I completely agree with Scal's message. Be inclusive, mix with different martial arts. I do, I mix with Japanese, Chinese, um, Indian, Filipino martial arts. I've got people training in my club from all of those backgrounds and others and MMA and all sorts of other boxing, all sorts of other stuff. Be as inclusive and uh, friendly as possible. Don't be a dickhead online, basically, um, when you don't need to be. But as I say, call out Bullshido when you see it because you're doing, this, you're doing everyone a favour, in fact, in the long term. I hope this has been a useful video for some people. Um, as always, I welcome your comments underneath. And I've probably missed some points in here, but you know, it's a very complicated and very big and potentially very contentious topic. But fire away in the comments. I'm interested to see what you say. And I'll see you back on my channel again, uh, which is, as you know, mostly a HEMA channel because I actually do HEMA. I actually teach HEMA. I've actually studied HEMA, so I talk about HEMA. And hopefully I'll see you back here again soon. Cheers, folks. Thank <music> you.